Hello there, it's your girl Daphne back with another video. This time I'm bringing you my patio marathon video of 2022. I hope that everyone enjoys the full complete patio makeover for 2022. Here we go. So one of the larger projects that I do every spring is power wash the patio. And when I say this, the past two you know, years I've been doing it. Um, so this year I decided that I wanted to make my job a little easier. So I got one of these surface uh, cleaners. This cleaner is amazing. I was able to cut down my cleaning time by so much. I, I didn't, you know, equate like what the savings was in time, but I'm telling you it's a fraction of the time. And also, I didn't get as dirty as I would have previously. So here I am, I'm just unboxing it. I'm taking a look at the um, instructions. Um, it's always tricky for me to be able to put these attachments on. I don't know why my brain, you know, doesn't connect um, quick enough to be able to figure it out, but eventually I did get it to stick. Now, one of the things that, I'm, that um, I really liked about this is that by using the pressure wand, everything that's down on the patio splashes up, like whatever dirt, um, mud, anything that's down there is gonna splash up. So that's why I usually, I use my um, rain boots. This time I used a scrubber and nothing splashed up on me. Like it was absolutely amazing. So if you guys plan on doing any pressure washing, I definitely would get one of these surface um, cleaners. I picked this up at um, Lowe's and I think it was $29. So it was definitely a great investment. So halfway through this project, I realized that I hadn't diluted the uh, cleaning solution. So that's why it's extra sudsy at this point. I'm telling you like I'm editing this video now and just watching 
the pressure washer, just glide across the paver and seeing all the bubbles. It is so mesmerizing. So of course the first sprayer that I tried to use was broken so I'm gonna have to get another one of those and I'm pretty bummed out about it because that is my um, uh, sprayer that I usually attach my miracle Grow liquid feed to so I'm gonna have to get another one of those because I definitely do use that um, on the landscape um, so right now I switched over the hose um, the sprayer head and now I'm just getting off all of like the dirt um, that had accumulated um, when you do the scrubbing. So you're able to loosen up all of the dirt, but it still is on top of the pavers. So you just have to go back with a little clean water. And then I'm using um, this broom to just sweep off the excess water. And then I'm gonna show you how the uh, patio turned out. Alright, here. Um, slide. Just see if it fits right into the. Okay. Oh my god. Is it all the way? Oh my god, that's. So welcome back everyone. We are back on our patio and this is our second attempt and we are having an amazing time. As you can see, my husband was super excited with us putting the wood inside of the garage and letting it acclimate and dry out that the brackets were just sliding on very easily. Now we do have to still plane some of them, but with the planer, it made this job so much easier. So my first suggestion for this build is if you're doing one of these DIY pergolas, make sure that you have a planer. And I'm gonna show a picture shortly of the planer that we um, purchased. It's from Home Depot and I think it was only about $40. And I'm telling you, it is worth the purchase. So I announced in my last video that I was working on building my website. So it is live now. So check it out. It is DaphneSHomescape.com. So I hope that you guys will stop by and enjoy. Okay, so this board right here needs to be planed. We're only getting it in about a third of the way. So we're going to use our planer. We're just gonna plane it down so that we can get it into board. Hi 
I just want to introduce myself to anyone that's new that clicked on my video for the first time today. My name is Daphne. I want to welcome you to my channel. I post videos once per week and I do all types of homemaking content. And I want to welcome back all of my loyal subscribers. Anyone that hasn't subscribed yet, I hope that you subscribe by the end of this video and join our community where we have open conversation um, about the video itself, any uh, you know things that are going on in our lives. We listen the comments and we like to just chat and um, you know just enjoy each other's company. So I hope that you will introduce yourself and also you know leave a comment down below. So we slipped up here and we were working harder than we needed to. So in a second, we realized that we need to start having gravity work in our best interest. So we are gonna take off this section, which is the eight by 10 section of the uh, pergola. We turned it over and it made it so much easier to be able to slide the posts into the brackets. And then we just went in and we did a couple more um, planing to just be able to make that wood just slide so easily into the brackets and at this point my husband is like a pro at planing down um, these boards and Alex is just having so much fun doing you know skip hop you know around the boards and we're just having a good time um, this weekend actually it wasn't warm but it wasn't terribly like bitterly cold that we couldn't be out here so it was the perfect time for us to just be out in the yard um, we actually had just come from a morning game um, Alex plays uh, baseball and he had a double header so we were out of the house by like 7 30 we had two games and then we started this project around about 4 30 and we really enjoyed it so as you can see we're super excited of what we were able to accomplish and that was the end of day one this is the starting of day two um, my husband marino is out early and we did have um lights uh, that we had strung across the patio um, we had two sections which worked very well for us but now that we're going to be having the pergola we're able to install the lights um, around in the pergola and then he's also going to keep this one section of wire and continue the lights um, onto the grass um, but for now um, we're just getting ready because we are going to be having um, extra help with um, hoisting the top of the pergola up so that we can just put the footers on so right now um, my husband is just securing all of the brackets and he also was working so quick he attached all of the corner um, sail brackets so i'm just showing you a quick image you have to attach all of the sail brackets first and then once you have that attached then you go in and you measure um, the different sections of the middle brackets to be able to attach the sail and then you just pull it really taut and then your sail is attached so i'm just going to let my husband show you guys um, the process so to complete this build the only two tools that i would suggest is the planer and also an impact driver my husband said that this is better than just your standard drill because it gives it a nice amount of torque and power and you're able to um, you know, fly through it. But if you do just have a drill, the drill will do, um, you know, do just as fine. But if you have an impact driver, definitely use that.
All right, so the reinforcements have come. Um, my brother-in-law and my nephew are here to help us. We needed the extra help. Um, I do suggest if you're doing this um, that you need about five to six people, depending on the size of your pergola. We have a 10 by 18. So this is a large structure. So you need roughly about you know five to six people to be able to lift it up. So they're here to help us and you can just watch the process. We basically just tipped it we attached the post and then we went to the other side and we hosted it up. Um, the two that were lifting um, then went up on two ladders. They were able to lift it up a little higher so that we can go in and add on all of the posts. It was really easy um, to be able to do. You just need to make sure that you have the manpower to be able to lift the structure. And that's my nephew Tyson showing his personality. He's also going to be dancing and entertaining shortly. So I hope that you guys enjoy. So I absolutely love that I picked the white sail. It's gonna look absolutely amazing. Now, now I'm in the process of picking the stain. I'm in between doing a gray or a black. So now we're just attach, reattaching um, the lights. This time it's so much easier because we don't have to use the wire to be able to string it across. We can just drill it into the structure and it looks amazing. I'm definitely going to make sure that I input a nighttime um, shot in this video so that you can see how it looks at night. And then, um, you know, next time, we will be decorating the patio. So I'm super excited to be able to show you everything, you know, that we're able to do with the deck for this season. So I hope that you guys enjoyed. I hope that, you know, if you're going to do a project like this, that these tips are helpful. And as you guys can see, this is a sneak peek to the reveal. 
we're gonna get started with cleaning off the patio as you remember in our last video we did the complete of the DIY patio uh, pergola build so if you haven't watched that video I'm just gonna leave it in the description so you can check it out um, I have um, started to do the staining as you can see the posts have been stained it's a slate um, semi transparent uh, bare uh, stain and I absolutely love it um, we haven't completed doing the top portion of the staining because the weather in my area has been very unpleasant this past week it's been very windy and very cold um, so I'm happy that I was able to complete this patio uh, refresh but um, I wasn't able to complete it as quickly as I thought I would um, so I'm actually doing this voiceover today on Friday, the day that I'm going to be releasing um, this video. Um, so I will not have a night uh, view for you, but I will be updating, I think, the thumbnail with a nighttime uh, reveal so that you'll be able to see how it looks. Um, so we're just sweeping off uh, the patio and then we're going to get started. Um, the bubbles are so funny. I was over there and I was uh, get, gathering the rugs because I'm about to clean them. And I did not know what that was that was blowing by my feet. So I was really surprised that it was the bubbles from, from the water. So I'm just sweeping it off. As I said, it's really cold outside, so I'm not gonna be doing the power washer. So we're just going to be doing it the old fashioned way with a bucket of soapy water and a broom. And I'm just going to clean off these uh, rugs and then we're gonna get started with decorating. I would like to introduce myself. My name is Daphne. I wanna welcome anyone that clicked on my video for the first time today, welcome. And to all of my loyal subscribers, welcome back. To anyone that is hearing my voice for the first time, I just wanna welcome you if you do enjoy this video that you will subscribe to the channel and join my YouTube community. We consider ourselves family on this channel. We have amazing conversations in the comment section so if you are new please introduce yourself so that we can welcome you to the community super excited as you can see the shed is built it's not in its permanent spot but it has been built um, I'm just working on the side uh, base over there and then we're gonna be moving it shortly into its permanent spot I'm so excited to be able to get all of those items from out of my garage and into the shed so I just wanted to let you guys know an update on that
so this is just an overview of the two seating um, areas and how I set it up with the round table here and then walking over into the conversational um, area. I think that it, you know, it looks really nice on the patio, it gives us enough space and um, a separation. So I just wanted to give you guys an overview of the couple of items that we're gonna be using outside. Trying to keep it very like neutral outside and let the landscape really like speak for itself. So I am going to be setting the table. Um, at least I have plates. I think I'm gonna stack them and I might put like some uh, glasses. I have a Lazy Susan like tiered um, tray that I'm gonna be using. I have a throw. I have a plant stand there. I think I'm gonna take that full greenery out and just use it um, as a plant stand. I have this huge lantern here and then the other two DIY um, lanterns that I created during Christmas. And I have this basket that I love that I'm going to put one of my potted plants in. And then I have two pillows over here. I have an additional two that I'm gonna bring out as well to be able to work in the seating area. So this is everything that we're working with so far. It is very windy outside or I would have been talking outside, but it has been a challenge to be able to film outside this week. So we will get started. Okay guys, so this is the next morning. It's actually Friday morning, um, the day that I am going to be releasing this video. Um, I tried two other times to be able to stage um, the patio, but the wind was so strong. As you can see, the furniture that I had put out last evening had, was blown over. So we're just going to get started this morning with just replacing the furniture. So today is a much uh, less windy day, so we are going to start the decorating uh, this morning. So these are the some of the items that I'm going to be decorating with. So I just brought them out here on the patio, and we're going to get started. So I just want to let everyone know, so next video, uh, next Friday, it's going to be just a yard, backyard, uh, total refresh. So I'm gonna be doing the complete landscape and sharing it with you guys. So you'll be able to see like all the flower beds, the finishing uh, painting of the pergola, and just everything that I've done so far in the total uh, backyard uh, landscape. So make sure that you're subscribed so that you won't miss that video. I'm very curious to learn how the weather is in your area so leave me a comment down below if you remember last year when I did my patio um, refresh for spring it was actually a couple of weeks earlier and it was so much warmer last year than it is this year so I'm just wondering you know if it's the same way in your area as well And this time for spring, I'm just trying to keep it very neutral, but cozy. 
So I'm adding in my throws, my pillows, lots of candles, and just a little greenery because it is a little chilly. And over here on the table, I purchased this Lazy Susan, which is a two tier, but I decided to just use one tier um, on the table. And I'm just setting the table with these beautiful terracotta plates and a white napkin. And then we're gonna go in with a bunch of different candles here on the centerpiece so that we can just make it very cozy. So over here on the cat conversational side of the patio, I just have three groupings of lanterns. The two wooden ones I actually created um, as a DIY during the Christmas season. And then the third one I purchased at HomeSense and I think they look absolutely beautiful together. And we're at the end. I'm just going to be showing the before again and then we are going to enjoy the after. I hope that everyone enjoys this video and I want to thank everyone for joining me today on this patio refresh. Hello there, it's your girl Daphne, back with another video. This time, I'm sharing my summer patio refresh. I am chilling out in this comfortable spot here on this new sectional that I was gifted from Cozius. I'm gonna be giving you guys an overview of how we're getting started. This is the conversational area that I created in my spring patio refresh. And I told you guys that I was going to be updating this space shortly, and today is the day. So once I get everything cleared out the way, I'm just gonna do some light cleaning, just sweeping up the space. And then I'm gonna bring over the boxes and we're gonna unbox this amazing sectional. I would like to introduce myself. If this is the first time that you clicked on my video today, welcome. I do appreciate you stopping by and I hope that you enjoy my content. I also would like to welcome back all of my loyal subscribers. You know that I love you and I enjoy bringing new content to you each and every week. And I hope that everyone enjoys this video today because I truly enjoyed making it for you guys. Ooh. 
I'd like to say a special thank you to Cozius for partnering with me and gifting me this amazing five piece sectional. They were also amazing to be able to give me a discount code that each and every one of you can use. And the code is good until August. And I'll put the details in the description. And it is for 15% off any items on the website. And the code is Daphne15. I really enjoyed during spring when I started the conversational area. I did let you guys know that I was going to be building upon that and that's what we're doing today. So I'm just unboxing um, the five piece uh, sectional um, right now. Uh, the box that I'm working on is the armless chair, the ottoman and the coffee table. And then in the other box is the left and the right armchair so all of those pieces all together make up the five piece sectional i really like the way that they packaged everything in these two boxes i actually couldn't believe that all the items fit in there but they perfectly I want to give a special shout out to Brittany from Brittany's Beautiful Chaos. She's a fellow YouTuber and actually is the person that I learned about Cozy is from. So after you finish watching this video, if you want to head over to Brittany's channel, I'm going to link her information in the description. And if you do stop by, just tell Brittany that you're coming over from Daphne's Homescape. And I hope that you enjoy Brittany's content. I don't know if you guys are like me, but I love watching things get put together. I just love things like uh, power washing, painting, putting furniture together. I just love those things because I'm able to just zone out and just watch the process. And this was so easy to put together. The instructions were very clear. It even gave you a helpful hint telling you not to tighten all of the screws at first make sure that you put all the screws in leave it loose and then go back in once you set all of the screws and tighten them all at once and by doing this it makes the process so much easier Now I know everyone is shocked that I'm using a drill, but it was so easy. And I love using the drill as opposed to using the Allen wrench because it just goes so much quicker. So yes, I pulled out the drill for this one. And that is how quick and easy it was to put that together. I just wanna point out how beautiful the color difference is on this particular sectional. It's a mixed brown wicker, so it has like a medium tone and like an espresso color. And the way that the, cover, the color is weaved together makes it look so amazing and it fits in so well with my neutral uh, decor that I started in spring and now I am going to be able to add this in and really set off the whole mood here on the patio.
I put all of the other pieces together as well. And now that I have everything assembled, I'm just going to be using these little clips that they supplied to be able to attach all three pieces together. I opted not to attach the ottoman because I like to be able to move it around freely. Um, but it is absolutely amazing. Um, what I also like about this sectional is the cushions. The cushions are super sturdy and they're made of like a high density foam and the cushion covers are water resistant so it holds up to a light rain and then also if you drop anything on it it beats up on the surface so that you're able to just wipe it right away. So when I was unboxing the sectional originally, I was shocked. I did not know that it came with a cover. So I was super excited about that. So last night before we went to bed, we just covered it up. And we do this every night because I like to just keep it um, you know, free of any type of pollen or anything. And then in the morning, I take it off and I usually sit out here and have like coffee and um, eat breakfast and we just relax especially myself in the morning I usually do that after I drop Alex off at school and on this day is day two so I'm now going to be going in and just giving a little light cleaning and then doing the final decorations so I hope that you guys enjoy the next process I'm just giving you a close-up of all the pollen that is on the table and that's what I was trying to keep off of this sectional so that's why I've been covering it up so what I'm going to do is get started with doing power washing and if you remember from my spring patio refresh, I wasn't able to power wash the rugs so I am going to be going in and power washing the rugs, the table and the chairs and anywhere else that I think um, just needs to be refreshed. But I hope that you guys enjoy this power washing. So if this is your first time by, I just want to let you know I am having a ball with all of my outdoor content that I've been sharing um, for the last month or so. It has been amazing to be able to get my property into shape and share it with you guys each and every week. So if you haven't checked out my past videos, I will be having the playlist linked in the description. I've shared about seven or eight outdoor videos already and I plan to be sharing much more. We're gonna be getting more into doing a veggie garden, planting, and just overall maintenance of the area. So I hope that you guys continue on watching and enjoying my journey here on the outside for 2022.
So I just picked up a couple of items from Home Goods the last time that I was there. I picked up these wicker placemats for the round table, this amazing dough bowl candle. We're going to be using that wooden um, J, this box reef here, which I also got from Home Goods, and the Lazy Susan that we use in the spring um, decorate with me. So we're just going to be incorporating all of those items into the patio. I'm also going to be placing the two planters that I made in my last video. So we're just gonna bring everything all together and make it super cozy. So as I add the final touches, I'm just going to be showing you the before and then we're going to get into the after. So I hope that you guys enjoy and I hope that by this point you have subscribed and you will be joining me next week for another video. And here is the after. This is my little backyard oasis. And I hope that you guys enjoy all of these after images.
So I've been getting a lot of comments, um, compliments on my yard, on my lawn, and I really want to say thank you to everyone. But I also wanted to just um, show you guys what I do to try to treat different areas. In this case, I have some Creeping Charlie, and I'm just spraying it with this ortho um, weed killer. It's safe for grass, and you just have to follow the instructions. I sprayed it, not overly saturating it, and then I'm also um, spraying these random weeds that I have um, in the lawn. And then I'm gonna wait two days before I um, mow the lawn. That's how it's listed on the instructions. And I'm gonna periodically check back in and show you guys how the progression um, is going on the lawn in this section because the Creeping Charlie, I let it go for way, way too long. And I just wanted to show you guys how you're able to work on little areas and get things taken care of. Now this is an area that we worked on um, two videos ago. And I just wanted to just let you guys see, this is where I sprayed it. This has been a day later. So as you can see, the Creeping Charlie is starting to die. And what I'm gonna be doing is doing a total cleanup in this area. Um, we have our heating tower there. I had it on the grass. You're gonna see where the grass died underneath, but that's okay. As soon as you move it off, I'll be able to rehab it and get it uh, back to life so I'm just going to relocate this on the other side of the lawn and then we're gonna go in and we're going to weed whack all of that high grass that's coming over from my neighbor's yard and then we're just going to do all the weeding and cleaning in that area um, and just make it look a lot better and then we're gonna continue to work on different areas within the yard So I am proud of myself. I was able to grab the weed whacker and this is only my second time weed whacking before. So I'm trying to go slow, but I was able to get it all weed whacked before I started mowing and I tackled all of this high grass that was coming over uh, from my neighbor's uh, side. And I am going to make sure that I am on top of this before I mow each week so that I can make sure that it doesn't continue to come over on my side. So after I finish this, now I'm going in and I'm doing the mowing. This is actually only the second or third time that I've mowed this season because we've had such you know cool weather. The grass hasn't been growing as rigorously as it has in past spring. So just taking you guys along for the mowing motivation. I like to introduce myself to anyone that's new that clicked on my video for the first time today. My name is Daphne and I'd like to welcome you to my channel. To all of my loyal subscribers, welcome back. I hope that everyone enjoys this video and is able to just sit back, relax, write out your to-do list and just enjoy. I have been doing so much outside and I am so thankful to all of you for tuning in each week to join me, to see what I'm doing, to check in and chat in the comments with me. So I just wanted to say a special thank you to everyone for watching. So I made sure that I did all of the weed whacking first and then I came across it with the lawnmower so that I can pick up a lot of that long um, grass. But in the areas where it's on the rock wall, I had to rake those areas out. 
And now I'm going in and I'm pulling out the weeds that are in the mulchy area. Now I noticed that a lot of these underneath this table in this area is columbine and it's seeded, it's self-seeded here because I believe I had on the table last year some of the columbine plants. But as you know, any type of plant that is in an area that you don't want it to be is a weed, so you have to pull it out. So unfortunately, these were beautiful columbines, but they were not serving me um, the way that I would want them to, so I had to pull them out. So since we're working on this side, I'm just going to redefine the edge here. I'm gonna be using my electric edger. So I'm gonna put you guys on the tripod so that you can get a better look. Now I'm definitely not a professional, but I do get better each and every time that I use another tool. And I think I did a pretty good job. So all of this grass, this ground cover is called Creeping Jenny. And can you believe it was only about four quart size plants that I originally planted along the fence to just fill in the rocks. And it has grown all over the place over the past several years. Now what I usually do, and I think I'm going to do this week is cut all of this creeping jenny just back to about a foot away from the fence and then just let it re um, you know reflush out but I think it's a little too much for now so probably in the next video you'll see this um, just all cut back and where I had the columbine I'm just gonna go in and where the other weeds were I'm just gonna go in with a little ortho weed killer to just suppress the weeds there as well as promised we are back in the garden and we are going to be working on rehabbing this poor neglected cilantro and we're also going to be potting up this sweet basil and this uh, rosemary and I already have English thyme that I've had for a couple of years that keeps coming back. So we're just going to get started. We're going to see what we're going to be doing today but we're definitely going to be having fun. So I'm so glad that you guys joined me. So let's get gardening.
So leave me a comment down below if you're doing any uh, gardening, if you're doing an herb garden, if you're doing any veggies. I am really loving all of this sun and being outside. So I think I will be planting a little more herbs and definitely some veggies. So I'm gonna keep you guys posted, but leave me a comment down below with anything that you're working on in your garden. I love all of the colors that the herbs and flowers are bringing to my backyard. I'm just able to put little pots and nestle them into different areas and I'm so thankful to be able to share this with you guys. I feel like I am looking at the outdoors so differently this year. I'm really enjoying all of the colors that nature has to offer and I'm constantly sharing on Instagram and also in the community um, tab different flowers and inspiration so I hope that you guys are enjoying those posts that I've been sharing. I'm definitely going to keep you guys posted on this cilantro, but I don't think it's going to make it. If you remember from my last video, actually I think it's two videos before this one, when I sheared back all of the pansies that were not doing too well, where these were the last four of those, the tray that I had rehabbed, and you can just see how it flushed back out with all of these beautiful blooms. So never give up on your plants, just water them and cut them back and they will bounce back. So last week as I was walking down this path, I noticed that I had a voluntary pukara. And here it is. I am going to dig it up. It came from the plant that is on the other side of the walkway, I guess, and it must have blown across. Now I have landscape fabric all underneath all of this mulch. So the hookra had rooted on top of the landscape fabric. So I'm just gently pulling it out and we're going to pot it up in one of our planters in the back. And I hopefully will be able to get two additional hookers from this. And then as I was pulling this out, I noticed a little green hookra over here. So I'm gonna pull that out as well. And we're gonna plant it up and we're gonna watch it and we're gonna see how they do. Thank you. 
Now in the past, I probably would have just pulled that out and tossed it thinking that it was a weed. But because I've been really paying attention and looking at all of the leaves, I was able to uh, recognize that that was a hookra or corobel, whichever name that you would like to call it. But they're absolutely beautiful and I have them all throughout my landscape. And it's a very easy plant to be able to care for. Today I just wanted to give you a quick look at all of the blooms that we've had over the spring season. These are from mostly my front yard, um, the sloped area. They're absolutely beautiful. I shared images of this previously on my Instagram uh, page, but just in case you didn't, um, you're not following me over there, I just decided to just share it here in the beginning of the video. So I hope that you enjoy. We're gonna get started today with doing some container planting and we are planting up a variety of vegetables here on my patio and I'm super excited to be sharing it with you. So last year, if you've been around you know, for a while, last year I shared that I picked these um, grow bags up at Joanne Fabrics at the end of the spring season. So they were either 75 or or higher percentage off so I got them literally for like a couple of dollars each for the large bag and then I want to say that it was about a dollar or two dollars for the smaller bag so I took a trip to Home Depot and I picked up a variety of a, a tomato which is called a patio tomato which I did not know existed it's a small hybrid um, variety and then I also picked up a couple lemon balm plants, which I've heard is really good for um, deterring mosquitoes. So that's definitely something that I'm looking to do. So we're gonna get started with potting up the tomato plants in this large um, grow bag. And I'm just using the same uh, gardening uh, potting mix. It's an organic blend of miracle Grow, And I picked this large 50 quart bag up at Costco and it was on sale at that time. But um, I did have to go back uh, in this video. I just went to Lowe's and I picked up uh, 225 uh, quart bags um, to be able to finish uh, the planting in this video. But in case you're on that lookout, always check at your local Costco's and also, you know, Lowe's, of course. So I'm just adding in a little organic uh, plant tone and I'm just working it into the soil. And then we're gonna pop in the plant. Now with tomato plants, you can bury the plant about two thirds of the way because the actual stem of the plant will make roots. So you actually can bury the stem far down into the soil and it just makes it a lot more sturdier that way. So here we are, we're all planted up. I'm just gonna give it some water and I'm going to put it in its location uh, on the patio. So I mentioned in my last video that I was gonna give you an update. This is on the Super Bell and the Potato Vine. They are looking absolutely beautiful. And we're gonna move over to uh, planting up the Lemon Balm. But I also wanted to just mention, in case you're not familiar, I do have a blog. It's called Daphne's Homescape. I always have it linked inside of the description. And my most recent post was ways to add instant curb appeal. I 
I'd like to introduce myself in case you're new and you have not heard my voice before. This is your first time clicking on one of my videos. My name is Daphne. I'd like to welcome you. And to all of my loyal subscribers, welcome back. I hope that everyone enjoys this video. This is a first time for me. I am venturing into doing veggies and I'm absolutely loving it. So as you can see from all of the uh, outfit changes, I'm doing this over the course of a week. So whenever I have time, I pop out, especially when it's not raining and I like to get a little gardening done. So I just collected all of these pots. Um, I wasn't sure which ones I was gonna use. So I just wanted to make sure that I cleaned everything out. So I'm just using a little water and a little dish soap and I'm giving it a nice scrub before we get to planting. So I decided to use these, I think it's a 12 inch uh, container. I'm gonna be planting up first these burpee cucumbers, which is a bush champion. And it's a full sun plant. It's the first time that I'm doing it. I'm following the instructions. It indicates that I need to do holes in the container about half an inch depth. And I'm doing about three inches apart. So I'm gonna be doing about four uh, in this container, and then I'm gonna cover it up with soil and I'm gonna water it in. And then we are gonna move on over to doing the summer squash, which is the same procedure, but I'm going to be sowing two seeds per hole in, uh, in that pot. Now from the research that I did, both of these, uh, the cucumber and the squash are not trellis um, varieties. So they are supposed to bush out. And if anyone knows differently, you can correct me in the comments. As I said, this is my first time doing it. But these two varieties indicate that they work well in containers. So that's why I decided to uh, pot these up and we are going to experiment and we're gonna have an amazing time watching these grow. And of course, I'm gonna give you guys updates along the way. So if you've made it this far in the video, I just want to thank you. I also would like if you could leave me a comment down below and let me know what you are planting in your garden. So several years ago, my husband and myself um, built this uh, little garden bed and we've never planted it up with um, any type of vegetables. We used to put just like little pots uh, inside of it and we would just put flowers. But this time I decided that I'm going to plant veggies in it. And as you saw, there was a bunch of gravel that was from another project that we had. We just dumped it in the bottom. But I decided to keep it there because it will offer good drainage. So what I'm doing is I am adding a liner and I'm just cutting holes into it so that it can drain well. 
I put a little cardboard underneath it so that the weeds won't come up. And now I'm just adding in some potting soil. This is a soil that I mentioned that I got from Lowe's. And it's also miracle Grow uh, potting mix. And we're just going to be planting up some spinach. Now this is my first time with spinach, as I said. I am using um, Laura from Garden Answers Technique. She said that you can just basically sow your spinach seed, just sprinkle them, and then just rough them in and sprinkle with like maybe a little dusting of potting soil. And I learned that the spinach can be a second fall crop as well. So hopefully we do well here in the summer and then we'll be repeating this process in the fall. So guys, I just want to thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate all the support that you've been giving me. And I just wanted to just wish everyone an amazing and blessed weekend. And I'll see you here back on next Friday. Mm -hmm.